So the group is waiting for Eddie and Betty to arrive and they see the Mysterium. And so out of Miles' curiosity, he goes in. But Peter's a little bit reluctant because he hasn't seen Mysterio since he got out of jail. Um, so he warns him, like, don't trust everything that Mysterio um, is saying. And Mysterio hasn't been seen since the last time that Peter fought Mysterio, which was very early on in his career. I think it's when he was like 16 years old. Um, so nobody's have heard from Quentin Beck in over nine years. And so out of Miles' curiosity, he goes in. And the only thing that will change with this one is that there will be a Martin Lee boss fight. So you know how he goes into the DJ thing and then it goes into like him fighting the demons? The demons are still there. They're like just sub enemies. But the main thing is you get a Martin Lee boss fight. And the whole time the boss fight is happening, Quentin is like, I don't understand what's going on. I tested the machine multiple times. Everything seemed fine. I'm so sorry that this is happening, but we'll fix this. Um, there's three other machines in the city. Um, if you could help them, if you could just help me check them out, that would be great. Um, and I'm so sorry for this happening. So it gives the idea that Quentin is actually trying to um, get away from his past sins of being Mysterio and try to start again, be a, a new person, but still using his talents of illusion and mystery. <laughs> It's just, what I noticed about the Spider-Man side missions is that they're very, very, very repetitive. So yeah, I will keep this the same, just have a Martin Lee boss fight here. Like a remix version of like the first game or something else, you know? You hear me, right? Beautiful. <laughs> now we're not we're not gonna skip it. Yeah, everybody's here. Eddie, Betty, Miles, Kate, Genki. Everybody's here. Harry as well. And it, it's a great moment here for them to just socialize, bond. They get to know each other. They talk about the I devil's breath, what they've been up to. So it's a great way for them to just have, like, the characters bonding. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I already played this game, like, a bunch of times. <laughs> Damn, I'm cooking them. Bro, I played this game. So I played it when it first came out. Um, I played it again once it had like a new game plus. And then I don't know what happened, but my my save data got deleted or something like that. Um, so I, I played it again, and then I had to play it again with the new game plus, so I could do this stream because this is like a new game plus. Um, so yeah, it's been like four. This is like my fifth time playing it. Of course, man, of course. And I'm definitely keeping that in the rewrite. That's so thuggy. And I'll keep this too with Tombstone trying to go straight. This is good. And he's the main target that... So Craven's going to pull up. So, But he's the main target that he's trying to capture. And I know there's a line that says like, Oh, but Mysterio's here too and they're not showing any attraction to him. And I keep that the same because Craven doesn't think Mysterio's like a, an actual threat. Or a worthy prey. Wait, how far... Did you finish the game? How far are you? 
Okay, so we're gonna go... But only a little bit. Brother, I don't, I don't think you should be watching this. I mean, I, I, I'm happy that you're here, but I don't want to spoil anything for you. I mean, we're gonna go a little bit ahead of the Coney Island part, but not too far. So everybody's still here. Um, again, Peter, MJ, Eddie Brock, Betty Brandt, Miles, K Bishop, Genki. I'm gonna skip this part because oh, I can't skip it. I'm pretty sure I can. I can't skip this. I hate roller coasters, bro. I can never do this. I don't know why people like it. See that? That's terrible. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, so so you know a little bit. Yeah, we're not gonna reach that part. We're gonna stop um, where they first, where they get the first Spider Verse bug. Once we get there, then I'm gonna stop it. The big guy. Oh, Craven. The big guy. You're talking about Craven, right? Let me skip this, please. I don't think I can. Oh, yes, I can. There's an exit. The guy in the metal armor. The guy in the metal armor? Who are you talking about? The guy in the metal armor. Am I bugging out? Guy in the metal armor, guy in the metal armor. Do you remember the name? Or what part was it? Yeah, let's let's get going. Gotta hit that muscle up. I'll show the zappy thing. Oh, like uh in the foundation or in the church? Oh, I know where you are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. Me, sir. <laughs> Damn. Damn, he's mad. Yeah, I will keep this too. So like everybody will be like, "Yo, like how did you do that? Like what the heck? like they're so stunned that they can't even speak about it." So, speaking back to the previous episode of Spider-Man talking to that older man about love and his wife and Peter thinking about marrying MJ and he's thinking about all this because life is going good like he's reaching like the he's, he's in his middle 20s um, he has a house thanks to May um, he's being very financially responsible with maintaining his job as a teacher also doing side gigs as with photography with the Daily Bugle um, and things are going great with MJ so he knew Coney Island was going to do fireworks, so he strategically planned to go on the uh, the Ferris wheel with her at this moment, and he has a ring in his pocket. So in the last episode, when he was looking at the rings in like the jewelry shop, he actually bought a ring. Um, and the thing is, is that MJ is a little bit stressing over her job at the Daily Bugle because, you know, 
her story didn't get posted and Jonah is going to be firing anybody who isn't providing any accurate work or uh, to his standards of work um, so she's a little bit stressed about her job but you know um, Peter brings her right back into the moment with her him saying like um, like everything's gonna work out you're a great reporter um, and then he actually proposes to her and MJ is so ecstatic she's so excited and um, she actually she's about to say yes but unfortunately the hunters attack this, this cute moment and all that stuff. Um, the hunters attack. So before she could say yes, the hunters attack. So Miles is here too. He's you basically. So a big thing too is like. So imagine Miles is here too. Yeah. So basically, you'll see. Once we get there, I'll explain it. Oh jeez, I didn't even see him there. Oh, I wish I hit him from above. No, 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 definitely not. But there's missions where, like, especially in like um, the crimes, like throughout the city, you know how sometimes you could be with Rafe or um, uh, Harry. You're in missions where, like, you strictly work with like a certain character. Where is this guy? There they are. So Genki and Kate Bishop know Miles is Spider-Man, so they're not really, like Miles doesn't need to hide that. He's mostly hiding it from uh, Eddie and Harry. So Eddie, Harry, and Betty are the only ones that don't know that Peter and uh, Miles are Spider-Man. Eddie Brock. He's in my rewrite, he's in this game. No, 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 not Harry. So in this rewrite, Eddie's also in this game. Peter, Harry, and Eddie were childhood best friends in uh, high school. But Eddie Brock is in this game. These stocks are something, bro. Nice. Triple combo. Right? And I feel like every punch is like, it's barely doing anything. Yeah, so Miles is here too. You can switch for him. You can do combos with him. This all plays out the same way. It's just that Miles is also here. Damn, you got down quick.
And then you can have a... Ooh, I wish I webbed him. Um, he doesn't know that Craven's like hunting the Sinister Six. He doesn't know this yet. I think he should find out after this. Oh, I thought. So you can have like both, and then you can have uh, interactions between Miles and Tombstone, or like he first. So here's a big section that I want to change, or something that I want to add. Um, so basically with Peter and Miles working together to try to save Tombstone from the Hunters, Craven arrives, and he arrives because he wants to see how powerful or worthy of a prey the Spider-Men are. He does his research, so this is a Craven boss fight, and I feel like it's necessary because there's only like two in total in this game, and Craven's like the biggest threat here other than Venom. So I think he should have more boss fights. This is the first time that Spider-Man gets to fight him, and this is also good because this is the first time he gets to f Peter gets to fight him without the black suit. So you can see the the the, the power scale between them. Um, so basically, and even while they're fighting, he could taunt them, basically telling them like their their past glories, like um, how uh, Peter defeated Mysterio, how he defeated Doctor Octavius, how they, you know, like he he's done his research, he knows everything about him. But yeah. They're getting murked, and this boss fight, you could have them fight, like, you could have them, like, have, like, a, um, a health bar and everything, but, like, you're supposed to lose the fight. Like, he's he's unbeatable, like, you can't win, right? And so, Craven ends up knocking Miles out, right? He's unconscious, and then Peter badly beaten, like, you could say, like, he hurts his leg or something like that, so it plays into the whole roller coaster scene. Imagine as imagine that girl's Betty Brant. Hold on, let me just make sure something. Okay, good. Sorry about that. So keep in mind he's injured from the fight with Craven. They kidnapped Tombstone. You could keep this MJ thing. This is fine. So you can see that Peter is weak, like he's failing, right? And also he has to deal with this. So majority of everybody gets out, and I imagine one of these guys that got out is Eddie, right? And then he's just saying like, hey, he's like, what are you doing? Like, save Betty, save Betty. And Peter's like, I'm trying, I'm trying, just give me a second. So Eddie sees Spider-Man failing, right? True. And this is a big moment right here. This is a big moment. Like he he literally cannot save them. He cannot save them. He's looking at Betty and he's saying like I'm sorry. Like he's going to let her go. Like he can't hold on. Right? And mind you, Eddie Brock sees this. Eddie Brock sees this. He notices that Spider-Man can't save Betty and he's freaking out. But then you have this, and then Harry ends up saving the day. So then he saved... Imagine this is Eddie and Betty Brant. Like, he saves both of them. You could keep this the same. Yeah. Like Harry Harry finds out that, you know, he knows that Peter is Spider Man. Stuff like that.
<laughs> yeah. And I love how they have, so and especially this this rewrite, it stays with like Harry gets the suit first. He's the he's the very first one, and it's the same thing that's keeping him alive. Thanks, bro. He's the best mayor. So yeah, um, yeah, I can. But here's the thing, um, with this, so Miles hits him up, he's like, hey, uh, like, what happened? That Craven guy, he's like, so strong. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, we really have to, like, focus up next time because he beat the crud out of us. And then freaking um, Miles like, hey, I saw that, like, Harry, Harry's on the news and he has, like, those things on him. He's like, yeah, he's, I I'll explain it to you and stuff like that. Um, and then you have the Harry call here. So then also, and then they, you have a thing where it's like, yeah, I already called Eddie. He's making sure that Betty's okay, but he's going to meet us at the foundation. You want a glide? I'll give you a glide. I love these web wings, and I love how they incorporated it. Because it's like, it's been around since the 60s, like the first time that Spider-Man ever was a thing. And it's always been cool. Like, it makes sense for him to have it. Because what is he going to do if there's no, like, buildings to swing from, you know? Yeah, he has the web zip, but, you know, that fails. You can't use it all the time. Uh, Chris, if you're in here, bro, thank you so much for stopping by, man. I always love hearing from you. Oh, and yo, I also want to talk about that. I know, they're great, right? Um, I also like the, the shooting thing here, too, with, like, the abilities. It's pretty cool, too. Um, but yeah, Chris, those streams that you've been doing, they're pretty good, man. That stream you did last night, I was watching it last night. That, like, uh, it's like an old 90s game. It's pretty good, man. Alright, so imagine Eddie's here with, uh, Harry and Peter. So Eddie arrives and this is a great scene because it's just them just being high school kids again, goofing off, checking out Harry's new powers and stuff like that. But here's the thing though, Peter wants to tell Eddie that he's Spider-Man so that all all the, the original trio could be into the secret. So there's no secrets like holding them back. But um, Eddie makes a comment about how like he dislikes Spider-Man because he almost let Betty die. And so Peter's actually kind of sad that... Um, Eddie feels that way about Spider-Man, so he holds off telling him the truth. And so Eddie goes to get pizza for everyone while um, Peter and Harry talk about Peter being Spider-Man this whole time. So Eddie is freaking out tight now. Yeah, he sees, his, he sees his friend Harry. Yeah, he sees his friend Harry like, oh my god, you have superpowers? What the heck? Like, this is so freaking cool. And But here's the thing. So Peter is about to tell... You can have a thing where it's like, uh, uh, Harry, thank you so much for being there, and I thank God that you have these powers because Spider-Man literally fumbled the bag. He was gonna let Betty die, you know. So you have a reason where Peter's like, "Whoa, I kind of don't want to tell him I'm Spider-Man because I almost I almost couldn't save Betty. You know what I mean? I couldn't I almost couldn't save his girlfriend. So it's you it's planting the seeds of like Eddie not liking Spider-Man, you know." And you have like a thing where it's like Eddie's like, oh, I'm gonna go downstairs and and like order pizza or something like that. And they have this little moment where they they could talk about it. Mm 
Exactly, exactly. So Peter, Harry, and Eddie just stay up like old times, order pizza, goof off, test out the powers of the black suit. And it's just, it's nice. It's like Peter, it, he gets that like second chance. Like everything's going so well for him. And it's, yeah, I'll know a lot of times a lot of bad stuff happened to Peter, but when those good moments happen, bro, it's beautiful. So the only thing that I would change here, keep the same dialogue, but have a little bit where it's just like, why is this place a mess? And Harry's like, oh, hey, we were just, we were just checking out the new exosuit. And then, uh, you know, you show, you see that darker side of Norman. I'm like, he loves, I like this new adaptation where he loves uh, Harry. You know, I like it that he, like, he values so much. Uh, he values his son so much, especially since he lost his wife to the same illness. Um, but he doesn't play around with that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? This is the thing that's keeping his son alive. So for him to show Peter and Eddie, regardless of their history, it's like, I told you you had to keep this a secret. You're not supposed to show anybody this. Like, why would you do that? So he's like straight up like screaming at him in front of Peter and Eddie. And you see, you see that like, that like, that, that roughness from Norman. And he's like, dad, it's just not a big deal. Like um, the, there was, a, there was these hunters in the, in Coney Island and stuff like that. And I, I, I had to, I had to use it. You know, because um, Betty was in trouble and stuff like that. And then you could have Peter and Eddie backing him up, being like, "Yeah, uh, Mr. No Mr. Osborne." Mmm, that that could be interesting too. That could be interesting too. God, I, I I love it that you're here, Pig. I love it that you're here. This is so great. Um, but yeah, any time, any more times you have like ideas, like definitely put it in the chat. That's really good. But yeah, I could definitely see that. That could be a way where like they could like have that difficulty, you know. Um, but yeah, so then freaking you could have Peter and Harry, not Peter and Harry, uh, uh, Peter and Eddie like backing him up, and then you eventually, right? And you could have they they basically like back him up, and then Norman's just like, okay, fine, whatever. Um, I'm just glad you're okay. But where's Doctor Connors? I've been trying to reach him the whole time, and then you have this whole thing where it's like, you know. Damn, they messed that place up. So this is the one part that I was really excited about. So I'm going to totally change up the Spider-Verse um, collectibles, or whatever you want to call it. But basically, there's only going to be four, right? And it's a little pursuit mission. Like, you know how you, like, chase the birds and stuff like that? Well, this one is exactly like that, but it's pretty unique. So this one, Peter finds first. Um, and he trans he gets transported into the, uh, the Ben Riley universe, which is like a 1980s version of New York. And he's chasing Mobius. And then whatever, after the chase finishes, um, you get like a little cutscene where it's like you, you find Blade and you have to work with Blade to stop Mobius. And then he snaps back and he's just like, whoa, this that was so strange. I went to like another universe. So remember that video that Peter and Miles got from Craven's hideout? So I basically finished downloading. So they end up watching it and basically what they say is Craven hunting Shocker. So basically, it plays out the same way in this scene of um, Craven fighting Scorpion, but Shocker is the one that ends up dying and being killed by Craven, revealing his true intentions for the Sinister Six. Shocker, not um, Scorpion, and Shocker ends up dying, and it really traumatizes Peter because it's just like, like yeah, Shocker is a little bit annoying, but he's just like a like a like a common crook, like like eventually he would have wanted Shocker to to. Stop his life of crime. And I don't like it how he doesn't really care. Like, I feel like Spider Man should care. Yeah, he cares about Felicia, but even if any of his, like, villains were killed, like, 
I feel like deep down Peter wants these people to be reformed, be better people, you know? Almost here, and you're surfing the web. Ma, no one says surfing the web anymore. <sighs> you just need to get dressed. Okay, okay. Uh, see, you got your good lipstick on. <laughs> you must really like this guy, huh? Miles. I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. I promise. Miles. I love you. Listen to him. Are you worried about her? Yeah, I'm worried about Miles too. He's got a lot going on. College, Lee, new powers. We'll help him through it. We both will. I just hope Felicia doesn't make this too hard for him. Don't worry, I warned him not to trust her. He'll tell her about the hunters and make sure she leaves the city. Thanks, MJ. So the main reason why I want Miles and Peter to separate here is because it justifies them being separated. Or it justifies Miles going after Black Cat and him not helping. I don't think Peter, even if he was tired, um, would not go to help Black Cat knowing that her life is in danger. So this gives him a reason to not be there. So while Miles is handling Black Cat, Peter's trying to investigate the Sandman crystals because he knows that um, Sandman's... Sandman has like the earliest in, earliest interaction with Craven. So while he's while he investigates the last crystal, you hear this whole uh, dialogue line of um, of Sandman talking, and the last the last um, memory that you see is um, Peter's final final confrontation with Sandman where he like it takes place after the events of Miles Morales and Peter really remember that vial from the book pack from the first game um he opens it releasing Sandman and then Sandman's pretty pissed like why'd you keep me there for so long da -da 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 -da. then Peter apologizes for forgetting about him and he gives him the opportunity to to have a second chance at life like he won't bring him in to the raft or anything like that he just wants him to go 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 be a better person go use this opportunity to um to to change his life around and sandman does and he for since the events of miles morales he's been lying low he's been working um a stable job and he's been taking care of his daughter and wife and um it wasn't until craven came and and tried to hunt him that he he real walk in the salmon
Markle put Sandman to rest years ago. And Craven woke a sleeping giant. See? Exactly that. I was just talking to my source with Rash. Marco's been belligerent and incoherent since he got there. But he said he's starting to show signs of improvement. Whatever you're doing with those crystals, keep it up. It's my turn to follow them. Figure out who they are. I end up at this abandoned school in Harlem. Shocker gets killed, Vulture gets used as as a slave basically. And Craven tries to to and Salmon is Craven's first hunt, but he ends up failing. Sandman for his daughter. And Craven forced it out of him for his stupid hunt. What's going on in that head of yours? I tell them to leave us alone. But they don't care. They shoot me with a net. But are holding me down. And I would stand before I leave. I'm so ashamed. And I had no choice. Just gotta get back to you. Had to do something, or else he'd be just like Scorpion right now. I leave the grave for the school and come home. Walk through the front door. But they're not there. They are. What have I done to you, Kenya? Craven's real twisted for putting Marco's kid in the middle of all this. Gotta look for more crystals to find out what happened. Marco's memory is returning and he's agitated. The doctors are piecing together what happened. It, it sounds like it's not all his fault. Let me know if I hear more. This is our regularly scheduled programming. Sand crystal I start yelling. Leave me my cool. If they did anything to you, I can feel the sand about to take over. And then they splash me with some chemical. I don't know what it is. I'm trying my hardest to stay awake. I'm fading fast until I see black. Must have used some strong stuff to knock out Sandman. But what happened to Kenya? All gone. I wake up. That sand crystal is marked. Some kind of dungeon. Lots of empty cells around. You're not here. But are you okay? Marco must have felt so helpless. Trapped. With no idea where his daughter was. You say their boss is coming soon. And that he wants to meet me. I'm not waiting around. Marco was worried Craven's people hurt his kid. That's why he blew up. Marco was taken to the raft before he could find her. I need to make sure she's safe. Maybe there's more crystals back by where it all started. So, like I said, there was four missions. This is the fourth mission. So he goes through this whole maze. Giant fly 
Oh, nice. And it all comes down. I tried to do the best I could. There's the crystal. Hey, St. Hollow. My source at the rat told me Marco keeps repeating some address in Queens. Sending it to you now. I think you should check it out. Her mom. Maybe that's where Kenya is. Hey, MJ, you think you could pass me through to Marco at the Rat? Hang on while I look into it. I'm sorry for not listening. Guess I never got to know the man behind the sand. But I think Kenya's at her mom's. On my way there now. If she's there, do me a favor. Give her those crystals. Something she will remember me by. Of course. You take care of yourself, Ben. So after witnessing that final interaction with Spider-Man and uh, Sandman and hearing the whole story behind how Kraven uh, hunted him, Sandman, Sandman regains his consciousness or his shattered mind since he c collected all the, the shattered memories that he had and he actually uh, meets Peter in the in the the beach and they have the whole conversation where peter's just like I'm, I'm sorry i didn't know about your daughter and stuff like that and i'm sorry this happened to you and all that stuff but then sam is just like i just need your help i know where um craven is holding my family and we got to go save him so it ends with you guys with peter uh, with peter and sam and going to a um hunter base that where his family is and also you know how i told you how there's this whole thing where like you play with like a like a partner in various missions in this mission you get to play as sandman as your partner and it's only it's you don't get to play with him ever again but this is just unique to this story mission um so they go to the base and they see that they're they're um they're his family's okay that there's nothing wrong with them and so um they find out that sasha Cravenoff from the very first episode has had his, has kidnapped his family and a whole boss fight ensues. Um, Sasha Kravenoff is actually, um, I forgot, Calypso, Calypso, which is, she's like a witch that works for uh, Craven. Uh, she's usually not Sasha Kravenoff, but I'm combining the two so that Sasha has more of a, uh, a role to play. So after the boss fight, um, you win and stuff like that. And then Sasha actually explains that she's not working for Craven. Craven doesn't even know that, know about this base or, um, yeah, that he has um, Sandman's family and she explains that um, it was so difficult for her to escape Russia because uh, Craven has gone crazy with this, this this quest to find the the ultimate predator and um, or the greatest hunt and she felt sad she felt sad for Sandman and um, and uh, his family because she sees her family and that family that she used to have with Craven and then not only that but she also gives peter um she's the reason why you get um all the information on all the blinds and the bases and she gives you like a like a, a, a flash drive and be like you have to take down all these bases where that's where it leads to the hunter bases where you get that backstory of what happened to craven's family but she's she's very sad that like um craven has lost his mind and stuff like that and she's just like i'm just i'm just happy that i was able to save your family and stuff like that but you have to be weary of Craven because I don't know what's wrong with him but he's he's not gonna stop until he finds the ultimate predator and Sasha actually leaves she 
it can either end with her like um, I know it's a superhero um, game and it, they try to keep it PG-13 but you could have it in a way where like um, she either offs herself or she could just move away like she starts a new life and or tries to after the events of um, losing her family to Kraven and all that stuff but yeah it ends with like a Calypso boss fight and then after um, after the whole fight Sandman thanks Peter and it's just like thank you so much for for believing me and, and giving me a second chance and I'm so sorry for all the pain and, and hardships that I that I caused you throughout the years and then Peter's just like you know I just it just makes me happy to to see you be doing better so it actually shows like um, that Peter actually wants his villains to to do better to 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 progress in life to not always like delve into crime and stuff like that um, so yeah and then actually Sandman gives Peter the 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 little um, little crystal thing of him and his daughter, but it's it's um it's a crystal thing of him of Spider Man and Sandman, and they're like you know shaking hands or like uh, hugging and stuff. And Sandman leaves with his family. They leave New York City and they start a new life somewhere else. Man, senior bagel, where he put the bagel? Separate mission, so you know. <laughs> it's true. God bless her. I love this, bro. And I think it's great.
Yeah, I think it's great because the one thing that I love about the first game was that it showed you like the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Like parts of him that's like, you know, down to earth and stuff like that. Um, Because Spider-Man's day-to-day is probably just like stopping a burglary or stopping a bank robbery. Like it's very like, or stopping like a carjacking. Like it's very simple stuff, you know what I mean? But, you know... I feel like this game should prioritize, you know, expanding the Marvel Universe and it could build up into like the Wolverine game that they're making. So we'll introduce not only Wolverine, but the X-Men. And then, you know, during this time when Spider-Man came out, there was the Avengers game. And I know that game flopped, but, you know, you could have like a like a like a game universe where all these developers are making different games, but they're based on the same world, you know? Damn, bro, that looked like it hurt. I was about to say, my, my webs can't reach that? How far does this go? I can't tether here. I can tether here. I don't want to I don't want it to be too too close to these cats. No, 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 Don't make it hot, don't make it hot, don't make it hot. Don't make it hot, don't make it hot. I'm gonna separate these cats. Come on, you know where you see me, bro. This is absurd. Thank you. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's go back up here. Hey man, what's up? How you doing today? That's gonna be so loud, huh? Nice. All right, let's jump this. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on. Oh, come on. Nah. All right, whatever. I guess we're going hot. I wanted a pure stealth run. Ooh, I love that one, bro. That's such a good takedown. Oh, I think these guys didn't see me. That's good, man. I'm glad you're doing well. God bless you. You're a big fan of Spider-Man? Just so you know, basically what we're doing is we're not only playing the game, but we're doing like a little like rewrite commentary kind of thing. So we'll be playing the game, but there's going to be moments where we, we talk about what I would change in the story. I like the... I'm pretty good, man. It's going great. I really like the suit, like it's more um, comic accurate, but I, yeah, I feel like they should build up to it, you know what I mean? I feel like a suit change for a character or a suit design change, it's like it's like a big moment, you know? Cause it's like, like they're changing, you know?
Damn. I remember when this first came out, this was like so cool. I thought Doctor Strange was gonna be in the game. Okay, so, like I said, um, actually, I should probably show you this. Um, so, the uh, gameplay change that I would do, and I said this in the previous videos, um, is that, and Jackson, if you want to check out those videos, you can check it out on my YouTube. But, um, a gameplay change that I would do is that, I, I, I don't know why I can't speak. When you, when you meet a new character, let's say Black Cat right here, after completing this mission, you unlock her. So, you see how you sit there? it unlocks and they all have these like four moves um so so far in the story we've unlocked prowler wraith and now black cat right because it's like the change that i'll do here is like i'll scrap the whole girlfriend thing and she's leaving to paris because it's just like black Cat's such a cool character she's so important to like the spider-man mythos so for her to just be like hey uh thank you for saving me from craven now i gotta go do something like that's kind of stupid you know so i want to incorporate her in the story and the main thing is like they're saving her from craven and then she's just like you know it's probably a better idea that i i help you stop these guys because you know they're trying to kill me and i'll be safer with the spider-man you know what i mean um so she'll be helping you take down craven and stuff like that so as you can see playing the game you'll lock new moves for her and stuff like that and yeah oh speaking of which i hate that chain lightning what is a uh, phantom dash mm. You could do... Oh, we'll, we'll wait on it. Why didn't none of you get hit? Let me in, let me in. Hold up, hold up.
Whoa! There's a guy here. Where'd he go? Whoa, these turrets go crazy. Yeah, so I was change here like, no, don't worry, we're gonna protect you, we got you, and then it's good that you have this like thing where um Black Hat gets to meet Miles Morales and he sees like the best qualities of Peter in Miles. So basically I'm scrapping the whole freaking Felicia having a girlfriend in Paris and all that stuff and she leaves to go there. Well, I basically it's so basically I want Black Hat to be an additional character, a uh, partner that you get. Um so so far we have the Prowler, we have Rafe, we have uh, Miles, and then we also have black cat now and sandman was like a special one that you only got to use for the spider-man mission um so basically she decides to she goes to a safe house instead and she actually joins forces with the spider-man to to protect her from craven See, that's cool, and I will keep that too. That's perfect. Yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like what you see, like and subscribe. All right, thank you. Bye.